tonight and you are saying to me, Esli, I've never had a radical turnaround encounter with God, an encounter with God that has changed every fiber of my being. I want you to come to the front, but I, it's the person who says, I've never had that radical encounter with God. God is here to meet you tonight. I want you to raise your hands. I don't want you to open your eyes. I don't want you to look around. I don't want you to focus on your neighbor. I want you to close your eyes. Raise your hands. When you raise your hands, it's a sign of surrender. When you close your eyes, the distractions around you is removed.
We're on the program of God. We should be able to worship God for 24 hours. We should be able to worship God non-stop for seven days straight. The whole reason why we are here, the whole reason why God created us was to worship Him. What happens a lot of times with us is we allow the circumstances of the world and the voices of the world to influence our connection with God. And a lot of people don't know how to break through that. They don't know how to overcome that. So they struggle when it comes to really spending time with God. So what ends up happening is you end up getting stuck in religion where you just come to church, you sing three songs or four songs, but then the moment we go over to the fifth song or the sixth song, then you see people starting to struggle to stay connected to God because now you have to push further. You have to go deeper. For us to be able to go deeper, you need to push yourself beyond the natural realm into the spiritual realm. Because in the natural realm, you cannot receive because what you are receiving is spiritual. It is not natural. That is why we don't have victory. I said it this morning. What happens with a lot of people is they they are listening, but they're not hearing. Therefore, they cannot have faith. Or their faith isn't working. So the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So if you cannot hear, but you're listening, 
you're not able to overcome by faith. And in everything, the very essence of salvation, the very essence of the call that you answered or the, um, well, if Jesus is calling you to salvation, but the very act that you did to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life was done in faith. And if it wasn't done in faith, it was done out of religion or traditions or that is what I must do to be a Christian. But the reason why you don't have victory in your life is because that decision there wasn't done in faith. It was done in an emotional, natural sense. And this is not to put anyone down. It's just to explain, you guys can have your seats. It's just to explain why we are in certain places in our life. Now, this is not everybody, so don't think if you're facing a struggle that you weren't truly saved or you didn't, you know, have that true salvation encounter. Now you're not going to heaven. No, I'm not saying that. If the shoe fits, wear it. I'm just trying to explain certain things. So if we cannot go into a place of going into the spiritual realm, we're not going to receive. Or what we will receive is natural. It's not spiritual. So you'll always see that Prophet and I and all of the pastors that, um, of Encounter, we will push you guys a little further. We will push you beyond the natural into the spiritual. And for the people who hasn't, who's been here for a while and you haven't realized what we are doing, that is part of our job function is to get you guys to a certain place. But if you're not hearing and you're only listening, we can't just say to you, listen, you need to worship more. We need to put it into practice and push your guys' spiritual a little further. Now, you don't have to go home now and tell your boss and say, listen, I'm not coming to work for a week because I'm going to be staying in my room just with five cans of, or seven, five liters of water. <laughs> and just worship God. If you can and you, God leads you to do that, then do that. But I'm, that's not what I'm saying. When you come to church, when you go to e-group, when you come to a prayer meeting, before you enter the building or the house where you're going, examine yourself. The Bible tells us to always examine ourselves. We need to be examining ourselves and judge ourselves. We need to examine ourselves to make sure that we're growing, that we're always growing. So before you go into this place, examine yourself and see what is holding you down, what is weighing you down, and leave it at the door before you come in. Don't allow those things to prevent the breakthrough that God has for you here. And yes, God is there to lift our burdens. He's there to encourage us, motivate us, heal us, deliver us, and all that stuff. That is why He's there. But He cannot do any of that until you get into a spiritual realm People might say, okay, but I'm not as spiritual as you. No, you don't have to be. All you have to do is just surrender. I said it this morning as well. I don't know, I can't remember if I said it here, but I said what the woman did for those of you who were here this morning, even though all the circumstances that she was facing, she did the contrary of what she was feeling. If you didn't hear it, go listen to this morning and you'll understand. But she did the contrary of what she was feeling. I said it to you, one of my secrets to getting to where I am in life is by doing the opposite of what I'm feeling. So if I'm feeling tired, if I'm feeling angry at somebody, if I have unforgiveness, self-doubt, 
I do, and then thoughts come or suggestions come not to do this or to do this. I do the opposite of what I feel. So if you're in the building and you're worshiping God and you're feeling tired or you're feeling weighed down and you just don't feel like raising your hands, you just don't feel like connecting to God in your heart because the connection is there, it's not here. And if you just don't feel like doing that, you don't feel like singing, you don't feel like closing your eyes, do the opposite of what you are feeling because God deserves that. He deserves much more than that. If you didn't come here to worship God, if you didn't come here to love Him and adore Him and just be in a place of unity and fellowship with one another, worshiping Him together in oneness, I don't know why you came. Yes, we are here to teach you, to equip you, to raise you, guide you, lead you. But before that, we come here to first open the heavens. Tell God, God, I'm ready to receive from you. But before I receive from you, let me give something to you first. Let me show my appreciation towards you first. Because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here today. If it wasn't for you, I would be eternally separated from you. Or we just wouldn't be here. Because what if he destroyed the earth and didn't use Noah? None of us would be here but He chose to give mankind a second chance. He loved us that much to say, okay. And he then obviously after Noah's flood, then things still happened, but then Jesus came. So He chose not to give up on this world during Noah's time. He chose not to give up on us when He sent His Son, Jesus. So in the same way, we can choose to worship Him or not. Now, I'm not saying for those of you thinking, I don't have to listen to you because I do worship God. I'm not saying that. Tonight you might have worshiped Him, but there comes times in our lives where everybody is weighed down. Because the enemy will come and bring burdens. He will come He's looking for an opportune time to come against you. Don't think He's just going to leave you. Especially if you're doing something for God. If you're doing something to advance the kingdom of heaven, don't fool yourself in thinking you're not special. Because you are. Not just special to God, but you're a special target for the devil, for the enemy, because he's going around seeking like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So he, when he sees somebody and he sees your statue, he sees how you worshiping God, he sees how you adoring God, how you honoring, how you surrendering, how you giving all of yourself to Him, He looks at you and He realizes, I can't devour this one. I can maybe try, but I can't devour this one. Because this one, the God behind this one is greater than what I am. Even He knows. Don't think He won't try. He will still try. But don't think he doesn't know the God that you serve. But not just the God that you serve, the God that is backing you. The God who is working through you. The very source and the very words that you speak. When you are a born again, spirit filled believer. The very words that you speak. When you speak the Word of God, which is the voice of God, 
you better know those words pierce every atmosphere. It affects every atmosphere. There's a spiritual realm, there's a spiritual battle that we're facing all the time. Just because we cannot see into the natural, it doesn't mean it's not there. So when you open your mouth and speak, and the enemy sees the power that is backing you, he sees the one who is backing you. Trust me, he fears. Trust me. But you need the voice of God. You need God as your backing. And we, as born again believers, that is the promise that is given to us. The promise of being able to be with God once again and not separated from Him. You know, something that hits me every time when I think about it and I think about people, for those of you who know me, you know the heart that I have. And it hits me every time when I think how people, I lost my train of thought now, but it affects me when I think about people how they are affected by the lies and the suggestions of the enemy. It affects me when people don't realize who is with them, when they don't realize the power that they carry inside of them. Because I see people all the time where life is weighing them down and it shouldn't, it does but it shouldn't. Life shouldn't weigh you down because we have been given the promises. We have been given the answers to face every situation that we are facing. Every struggle, every challenge. The very fact that the enemy comes against you proves that you are anointed of God. The very fact that you are anointed of God should tell you, hey, I can do this. Not in my own strength, but in God's strength. In the strength that He has given me through the anointing. With the anointing, the Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke. So not just the yoke on your life, but you carry the very power of God to destroy the yoke on the lives of the people around you. But the problem is people don't know that they carry it. So instead of rejoicing, instead of celebrating the very fact that they being attacked by the enemy, that they being opposed by the enemy, instead of rising up and saying, hey, I'm doing something right. I'm being attacked because I am anointed. And instead of waddling in that, feeling sorry for yourself, feeling bad, feeling why is this happening to me? Or why is this happening to me again? Instead of feeling that way, we should rise up. I want you to take this today. To rise up in the anointing that God has given you. One thing, to destroy the yoke. Not just on your life, but on the lives of the people around you. You are here. Every single person in the building, whether you are in ministry, whether you are in the business world, whether you are whatever you are doing, the mission that you were given was the Great Commission. And the Great Commission is to go and populate heaven once again, to bring people back to God. That 
if you know nothing else, if you can hear nothing else from God, hear this today. Don't just listen to what I'm saying. Hear this today. That you are being attacked. You are being challenged because you are anointed. And you are anointed because you have a mission. Because you have a mandate. There are people who do not experience God, who do not hear God's voice, even though they can. They do not know how to hear God's voice. But you who are in this building, you have the ability to hear God's voice. You have a secret weapon. You have the anointing. You cannot be part of this church and part of this DNA and not catch the anointing that God has for this house. You cannot be here and walk out of this door the same. You need to change your perspective on your life. Yes, the world is struggling. Yes, the economy is struggling. But have you ever thought this is God's plan for the end time? Have you ever thought this is what He has designed? This world, we know this world has to come to an end. We know that. Rejoice in the fact that you are going to be part of the end time revival. Rejoice in the fact that God said in the end times, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So the fact that we are in these times, we've talked about it before. And we've shown you how, and we've proved to you how we are in the end times. However long it's gonna last, we don't know. But we've proven it to you. We've showed you. So instead of focusing on how bad the world is doing, when you are in God's economy, you are not subject to this world. You are not of this world. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And because we are not of this world and we are part of God's economy, we are due, it is due to us certain privileges. But the problem is because people don't know it or they haven't heard it, they've listened to it, but they haven't heard it. And because they haven't heard it, they could not have the faith to receive it. They haven't heard God's voice. They've listened, but they haven't heard. And because they haven't heard, they do not have the faith to be able to go further, to take them further, to take them a little bit deeper. And what people do is they focus on the negativity. Yes, everybody is feeling the struggle. We shouldn't, or let me say not everybody, because some choose, even though it's there, I choose not to feel it. I choose not to accept it. Why? Because my faith is in God. My faith is in my provider. It is not in man. It is not in this world. My faith in everything, not just finances or that, my faith in everything. Oh, trust me, there's times when our faith is shaken, but my faith is in my King of Kings and my Lord of Lords. He is my way, He is my truth, and He is my life. I know that I know that I know that I am in His will. I've listened and I've heard many times, many times I've wanted, because these things come to us, we are natural human beings as well. We're not just spiritual. We have a physical body. So these things come to us just as well. And there's been times where it's hit me hard, where it's really hit me hard, but I chose not to submit to that. And I chose to do God's will in the situation, to follow His instructions, even though I didn't always know what it was. I chose to follow. 
I chose not to submit to the feelings of the flesh, but I chose to surrender. I chose to listen and to grab hold on the promises that He's given to me. So what I wanna say in saying all of that, in the time that we're living in, in this end time, in the revival that you are part of, in the time where God is busy pouring out His Spirit on all flesh, don't listen to the voice of this world. Don't listen to the voice of the enemy. Don't listen to the voice of the media. Don't listen to your own voice that comes because of certain memories that you've had. So God's voice we know is the Holy Spirit. He speaks to us. But God's voice, God speaks to us through His Word. We know that with the enemy's voice, He speaks with strongholds that are built up in our minds that we've allowed, so there would be a whisper, we've allowed it to take hold of our mind and it has now become a stronghold. So the enemy speaks through those strongholds and he'll bring more whispers, he's gonna try. But our voice, we have a voice as well. We tell you we have a voice as well. Our voice, the voice that we listen to that is ours comes from memories. It comes from experiences that we've had and those experiences, if we haven't truly been set free, truly been saved, those memories will affect us. But not just our memories. We also have voices that comes from our environment. What is your environment? What is the environment around you? What are you listening to? Are you listening to the media? Are you listening to gossip, to slander, to rebellious people? Are you listening to religion and tradition? Are you listening to man whose opinions are their opinions and not God's word? That's what happens in a lot of churches. And I'm not here to speak against churches, but that's what happens. Are you watching stuff that influences you? Because you're watching certain things that affect you. If you are sitting here and you think by watching horror movies or thriller movies or watching um, gruesome action movies and you think that doesn't affect your spirit, you are mistaken. Now you're watching all these gruesome stuff. You're seeing what is happening. You think that it's something innocent. I'm not here to preach law. I'm here to just tell you what happens. You think it's something innocent, then you get hijacked or somebody breaks into your house. What happens? Your spirit or your body automatically links it to that. So now you have a greater fear because your spirit or your body and your soul and your mind and everything is so filled with either horrors or thrillers or gruesome stuff. So automatically your body goes into a place of shock, thinking this is what's happened to you. And you listen to those voices thinking, but what if they did this? But what if they did that? They could have done this. What if they come back? What if they do it again? What do you watch? What do you listen to? What consumes your time? What do you fill your time with? What takes priority in your life? Is your life filled with the Word of God? 
Is your life filled with worship and praise? Is your life filled with joy and life and love and peace? Is your life filled with the presence, the glory of God? Or is your life filled with the flesh? Filled with the, the, I don't want to say desires of the flesh, but filled with the meeting the desires of your flesh. Is your life filled with negativity? Is your life filled with demonic stuff? Through the, if you don't think Horace is demonic, then we need to get you saved. I know some people are laughing, but some people really thrive on watching those stuff. It gives them an edge. If you don't think that's demonic, really, what is your life filled with? We do not have time now as people who did 50 years ago or 100 years ago. We don't. We don't have that time anymore. I didn't know what God was going to do tonight. I didn't know what God was going to say. And it was tough. I said it to you this morning, the most scariest thing is having to stand on a pulpit and having to preach and you don't know what God wants to say. But it's so heavy on my heart tonight. For those of you watching online as well, it's heavy. It's weighing so heavy on my heart. The urgency there is in the spirit. The urgency there is in the atmosphere. We cannot, we cannot succumb to this world. We cannot, at least not encounter. We cannot. It's heavy on me tonight. Really, I can't explain it, but if you could feel what I'm feeling, you'll understand. It weighs heavy on me tonight. The burden for your life and for the lives that God has assigned to you. God has assigned certain people to you. Certain people need to meet you to encounter God. They need to have an experience with you so that they can have an encounter with God. They will not experience God or encounter God if you do not step into their lives. In the same way that you came here or met God through somebody else, even though you might have had a radical encounter with God in your house for some people, some people might have been at a shopping mall, on the beach, in the ocean. The fact is there have been people somewhere along your life that have planted seeds, that have planted seeds in your life, ministering to you or saying something to you about God that caused you to end up here, that caused you to serve God. They might not have done the salvation prayer, but they planted a seed. So God has assigned certain people to you that will not meet Him, that will not be brought back to Him and reconnected to Him if you do not step out. We would not have been given a great commission. Everybody is given that great commission to be fishers of men, to go out and to reach people. You are not unworthy. You are not evil. You are not unworthy. You are not self, I don't know, self-conscious. You are self-conscious, but you shouldn't be self-conscious. You are not unable. You are not incapable. You are not stupid. You are not ugly. You are not a mistake. 
the enemy lies too much to God's people. But the problem is we allow it. We allow it, yet we've been taught so many times. We've been told the promises of God. We hear it so often. Most of us has been saved our whole life. And we've heard the promises of God. I don't blame you for not have heard the promises, even though we've been taught this for, our, for how many years? Because sometimes we're not taught how to receive or how to listen or how to hear God's voice. So I'm not, con- I'm not condemning anyone. Every single person sitting here, every person that is watching me live, every person that is going to watch this, and every person in all of the campuses, and every person who actually is a proper, true, born-again believer, spiritful, you are anointed for a time such as this. God chose you to be here in this time. He didn't, he didn't raise you or have you born a hundred years ago. He didn't have you born 200 years ago or 300 years ago. He chose to have you born on the day that you were born. If people think that they were born on the wrong day, no. Some babies are born early. Don't you think that some people just chose to have a child when they wanted a child and not when God wanted the child? What if God wanted that child to be born on that day? The baby comes a month or two earlier, but the parents decided, no, we'll wait another two months before we try. They try, they conceive, and then the baby. God chose for you to be born in this time because He has an assignment for you according not just to your age, according to your age, according to your looks, according to your abilities, according to who you are. God does not make mistakes. God doesn't have a default. He didn't have a slip of the hand when He designed you. He didn't have a mistake when He designed you. He designed you to look a certain way. He designed you to talk a certain way. He designed you to have a certain ability and a certain gift and a certain call for a specific reason. Because there is a bunch of people, thousands of people for some that you have to reach. And that person that you have to reach won't necessarily listen to me. They might eventually listen to me after coming into the church or whatever, but they will not be saved and brought back to God if it wasn't for you. Because to some people, I might be too rich. To some people, I might be too beautiful. Or to some people, I might be too skinny. To some people, I might be too dumb. So they cannot receive from me. Unfortunately, that is how the natural works. The natural man doesn't look according to the spirit. He looks according to the natural, but he is changed by the spirit. So he will look at your natural. He'll relate to your natural circumstances, but he will be changed by the spirit and the anointing that is on the inside of you. He will be turned back to God because of what is on the inside of you. So to hear God's voice, you need to be sensitive to what He is saying. But you cannot be sensitive to what He is saying when your life is consumed by the voice of the enemy when it's consumed by your voices through everything that I mentioned, your circumstances, your memory, your environment. You cannot hear God's voice if those voices are taking prominence in your life. What do you fill your daily life with? That is what voices you will recognize 
the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. They recognize my voice. In the same way that a baby recognizes the voice of the mother, even though it's hearing all the other voices, even though the baby bird that has many birds around, many moms flying around, they recognize the voice of their mother. In the same way, you are gonna recognize the voice that is familiar to you. So if the voices that are familiar to you is negativity, and if the voices that is familiar, that you are familiar with in your surroundings is negative and bad and evil, that is what you're gonna hear. And you will not be able to hear God's voice until you clean out that, until you clean the gutters. How can you receive rain down a gutter thing? Or how can you receive rain? Let's say you have a gutter and to save um, water you've um, made your gutter go into your um, flower beds. How can you receive that rain into your flowers to grow if you have debris and old leaves and stale leaves and mucky leaves that is in the drain pipes blocking that rain from coming down. But it's not only blocking the rain from coming down, rain speaks about the blessings and the abundance of God. So if you, if you not only is it gonna block the rain from flowing down, the little rain that does manage to come through is going to be murky and dirty and gross. So the water and the nourishment that the flowers need is going to be polluted. So the voice of God that you think you're hearing is polluted. Or it's half half of what you think God is saying. But you cannot be confident in that because you're not sure if it's God's voice and you won't know if it's God's voice because the voices that are prominent in your life are these negative, evil, doubtful, fearful, unbelief voices. So, what do you need to do is you need to clean out these voices out of your life. And instead of trying to make a whole physiological, theological thing, practically clean it out. The people in your life that are polluting your life, that are causing your faith to be stagnant, that are causing your faith to be hindered, you need to remove them. And if you think, a lot of people think, oh no, but I'm ministering to them. If you haven't reached them yet, if you didn't meet them today and having coffee with them tomorrow, you need to remove them. Because you haven't reached them yet. The problem what happens with a lot of us is we think we are gonna influence them the problem is they influence you. They affect you. Get yourself cleaned out of the voices of negativity, the voices of yourself, of your circumstances, of your memory, of the enemy, of the strongholds that you face so that you can clearly hear God's voice because when you can hear God's voice, you are able to minister to that person exactly what God has for them. Because when you are not hearing God's voice, when you need to minister to somebody, you're ministering to them out of your own strength, out of your own ability, not God. God is speaking to us all the time. There's people who say, I've never heard God's voice. But the thing is, God speaks all the time. God says He speaks to us all the time. The problem is you are ignoring His voice or you aren't listening to His voice. So you need to clean out that negativity. If there's a person that is negative, that is weighing you down, cut that relationship until you can clearly hear 
an instruction from God on what to do or what to say and how to minister to that person. How you can destroy the yoke on that person. The moment that you can hear God's voice is the moment that He can speak to you he can teach you. He can reveal the Word to you so that your knowledge can grow, so that your faith can grow, so that your anointing can grow. So you need to be able to hear God's voice so that you can know what He says, so that you can have faith knowing that what you've said is according to His Word, according to the promise that He's given, so that no matter what comes, no matter what that person is facing, if you've heard a word from the Lord for that person and you know that you know, you have the faith for them until they get to a place where their faith is grown. And you say to them, I know that God said to me, it might not be in your timing, but it will be in God's timing. God has ordained a special time and a purpose for you and for that miracle for you to take place. But before that miracle will take place, you need to do certain things. This is now what you're telling the person. And that is how you teach them but you cannot teach them how to fight the good fight of faith if you yourself do not know how to fight the good fight of faith. And you will not know how to fight the good fight of faith if you do not know the Word of God which gives you the ability to have faith. So clean out the things in your life that are negative. If you are somebody who watches TV all the time, People think, now I know there's some guilty parties. I used to be a guilty party. Some people love watching reality shows. They love it. But unfortunately, the reality shows of today, we were watching once this reality show about pro uh, preachers. Yo, we were shocked. The thing is, is people think these things are innocent. They not. You're looking at the life of somebody who is not born again. You look, at, I'm not talking about the preachers, I'm talking about the other reality shows. You're looking at the life of somebody who's not born again. You're looking at the, because usually they do the reality shows of people who are rich and famous, or they do the people who have so many children and they then end up getting rich because they have all these children in the reality shows. The problem is, is you're watching these things. That is what you are sorting after. That is what you are desiring. That is what your flesh is longing for. But is that the will of God for your life? Is that what He has planned for you? And the problem is that then happens is you think, oh, but I deserve this. Oh, but this is me. God says He will give me the desires of my heart. And then when God doesn't do it, we get upset and we stop spending time with Him. We kind of go astray. We abandon Him just because He's not giving us the desires of our flesh, not the plans and the purpose that He has for us. So what I'm trying to show you, and I said to you this morning, I was gonna to talk to you about your voices. And these are all the things that influence our voices. Am I saying to you to never watch TV? No. But is that what you want to consume your life with? Is that what you want your life to be? What if you only have a year left to live, but you think you have another 20? A year or let's say six months goes by or 10 months goes by, Something happens and God is like, okay, your time has come to an end. And a sickness comes or a car crash comes and you haven't done anything for Him. Nothing. Because you thought you still had 10, 20, 30 years. People are living in the future in the sense of doing something for God. They're procrastinating in their life thinking, I'll still have time. I still have time. 
Now I'm not putting fear in you to think you're gonna die tomorrow. No, it's not what I'm saying. But anything can happen. We don't know the time that God has given us on this earth. We wonder why do some people die at the age of 30? Why do some people die at the age of eight? I have a brother that died at the age of eight. And I cried a lot growing up, saying to God, why? I love my brother and sister that I still have, but I said to him, why? Why did he have to die? If I listen to the stories and if I listen to how my parents explained him to be, he was literally like an angel on the earth. And I said, why couldn't I have a brother like that? Why couldn't I have? Because my life was very lonely before I knew God. Well, I always knew God, but I mean, before I really, really got into a relationship with Him. And I thought, if I just had Him, because my other brother and sister, they were very much like in, their personalities were like, their desires and their wants were the same. I said, why did He have to go? Why couldn't I have a big brother too? Then he said to me, he said, he was here for a specific purpose. The purpose that he had was to keep my mom alive because my mom would have taken her life if my brother wasn't here. My mom fell pregnant at the age of 15. She had him when she was 16. My parents um, had to, were forced to get married. My dad was an extreme drug addict, alcohol extreme guy, very possessed before he met God, very possessed, so bad that he tried to kill my mom three times, thinking that she was the devil. So that's why I'm saying he was possessed. He was so hard on her, he locked her in the house and she was ready to take her life. She couldn't take it anymore, but She had my angel of a brother there to preserve her life. He was the reason why she was fighting, why she was carrying on. And the fact that she carried on means that I am here today. And the fact that I am here today, I'm here to give you the message of God and the urgency and the spirit for the mandate that God has for you for this time. But he had to die because if he didn't die, knowing what I know now, if he didn't die, I don't know if he would have been serving God still because of what he experienced when he was younger. What if his life had turned into something that was like my dad because that is what he saw? And what if he didn't have the grace or what if he didn't have the opportunity that my dad had to draw back to God or to get saved? What if he went out one night, got in a car crash and died in that state? He wouldn't have gone to heaven, but now he's in heaven. Now he's there waiting. So we do not understand why certain things happen. We do not know how much time we were given. We do not know. Nobody expects an eight-year-old boy to die in a gruesome way, Nochal. Nobody expected him to die, but he did. So you don't know how long you are gonna live. Some people are blessed and fortunate enough to live long lives. And I know that is what God had planned for us, but when your mission is done here on earth, you are going home. But have you ever thought that for some people, God has to allow them to be removed because of the destruction they might cause? So in losing one life, He saved many. It's just a thought. That's not Bible. I'm just saying a thought. 
Have you ever thought about it? Don't be somebody that your life is, it is important for God to remove your life so that you, not do, so that you, not, so that you do not affect the lives of many others. In a negative way, I mean. Because we forget that we are the representation of Christ. When people look at you and they know that you're saved or a Christian, they look at you to see God. That is how they see God. They don't see God there because they haven't encountered Him. This is their representation of God. So how are you, and God will hold you accountable one day, how are you representing Him? How are you fulfilling what He has designed for you to do? How are you reaching the people that He has assigned to you? Listen to what I'm saying. God has assigned certain people to you and they will not meet God if you do not step out in faith, step out in confidence and boldness, step out with the voice of God being the one to lead you, being the one to guide you and direct you and direct every step of your life. But you will not hear God's voice if you do not remove the voices that are suffocating your mind. People feel the pressure because their minds are suffocated by the evil, fearful, unbelief, demonic, negative voices. And you cry out to God and you're desperate, but you cannot hear Him because you haven't cleaned out your gutters. I'm just using practical analogies so that you understand what I'm trying to bring across. How do you clean out the gutters? Remove the things that are hindering you from spending time with God. Remove the voices and the flesh that is limiting you to be able to spend time with God. When you are drained physically, when you are consumed or overloaded with the natural, it's like when you, in the same way, when you eat food and you eat too much, you feel full, you feel lethargic, you feel fat because your stomach is so bloated and all you wanna do is sleep. In the same way, when all that you are receiving the whole time is the negativity, all that you're receiving is the fear, the doubt, the gossip, the unbelief, you will eventually become fat and lethargic and you cannot get to God. You cannot walk into your prayer room and spend time with Him. You cannot open your mouth and ask, Holy Spirit, help me today. You cannot do anything because you weigh down by the burdens of life, by the voices that are suffocating you. So you need to remove these voices. You need to limit the time that you spend in the natural. Get involved in church. Get involved in e-group. When there is so many people who are ready to evangelize, we don't need to do one evangelism a week or a month. We don't do that little, but you don't have to do that. If there's more people saying, hey, God use me, teach me, Gerard, teach me how to do it or show me how to do it so that I know how to at least approach somebody in this sense and if I know how to approach them, I take the first step by approaching them. And because I was obedient to that little direction of saying, or that little feeling of saying that person, because I take that first step and I'm obedient to that little voice, God can then do the rest. He can speak to you then further and give you the instruction on what to do. Be here, be here in prayer. 
Let them teach you on a Saturday how to pray. Many people, how do I pray? I don't know how to pray. It doesn't work for me. Have you ever sat three months in a prayer meeting just watching, just looking? Have you ever asked your e-group leader, can I come pray with you? So I can see what you're doing. If your e-group leader doesn't have one, then go to an e-group leader that does have one. If they're not equipping you, somebody needs to be equipping you. So go to somebody who will equip you. It is physically impossible for Prophet and I and for our pastors to equip all of you on a personal discipleship level. That is why we have e-groups. That is why we have the little group so that they can focus on you. They are trained, they are developed to be able to do it and they're continually growing as well, or they should be. But the more e-group leaders there are, the more people we can reach. So get into your e-group, say to them, listen, apart from just watching them and seeing how they do it, ask them, what more can I do? What more can I read? What have you read? that made a difference in your life that caused you to be at this point and do what they've done and allow God to lead you in what to do. Then you can be effective. Then you can hear His voice. Get involved. Don't just, now I don't mean to offend you in the natural. I do mean to offend you in the spirit. There's so many people who are lazy, who are self-absorbed and just want to meet the desires of their flesh. They just want what's pleasing to them, not even thinking, but what is God's plan for me? What if God has called you to be the most powerful intercessor in encounter what if he has given you that gift and because of you thousands of people can be trained up in intercession because of you but you are too lazy or too self-absorbed to come to a prayer meeting and to learn it's not gonna just happen it doesn't happen that way the Bible is filled with everybody who did anything every person that we look up to in the Bible that we learn from all went through a process they all started at the bottom even though the dream was there they started down there it's not going to just fall into your lap So do something about it. Yes, we work. Yes, we get tired. But for those of you who know the secret, you know that there is a supernatural energy. It's called the inner jail of God that comes from Him. But that comes on you when you are doing something from Him for Him. When you are giving Him your life, that will come on you. It's not going to come if you just sit around. You have to feel it first. Feel the effects of being tired. Don't you think Jesus felt tired when He walked up the hill carrying this heavy cross on His sliced back? Don't you think He felt tired? Don't you think he felt exhausted? Don't you think he felt pain? More than any of us sitting here tonight or listening has experienced, I guarantee you that now. More. Yet, he had the energy, even though he tripped and fell at times, he got up and he carried on walking. But he didn't walk for himself. He walked up that mountain. He carried that cross. God gave him the energy to walk up there so that you can be here today, so that you can be given the mission and the mandate for your life, so that you can be drawn back to God, so that you can be restored back to Him. 
when the enemy came to steal your birthright, when the enemy came to steal what God had ordained for you, Jesus came, no matter how He felt, no matter how tired He was, no matter how much in pain He was, in the agony that He was, He came for you. He came for you. He paid the price for you. And if we are to be like Him, how much more do we not have to pay a price for others, for the people that God has assigned to you? If you are still here thinking, you are here as a mistake. You are here for no reason. Enough with the lie. Enough with listening to that. Yes, life has knocked us down. Life has hit some of us in every corner, every direction. But God, but God, He has a plan for that experience that you encountered. He has a reason for you encountering that because there's somebody else that was assigned to you that cannot carry that weight by themselves. They cannot overcome that weight by themselves. They need you who has the Spirit of the living God inside of you, who has encountered that moment. They need you to lift up their arms. Even Moses' arms had to be lifted up at a time. He paid a price for you, the most expensive price you will ever have. So stop thinking you are worthless. Stop thinking you are unworthy. You are the most expensive price that Jesus paid. Your life was so valuable for Him that He chose to put Himself aside. He chose to become a natural man and experience and encounter the things that you've gone through so that He can say, hey, I'm here. I'm here to lift your hands. I'm here to raise you up. And when you are risen up, you can rise up somebody else. Raise up somebody else. I feel like I can preach for hours. I really don't know where to stop. I, I don't. And in a moment, I'm gonna pray for everybody that is so weighed down in this life that the voices have wrapped around and consumed you and you just cannot break free. You might have a glimpse or you might have a step forward, but then you go three steps back and you just cannot receive that breakthrough. But if you come forward tonight and we pray for you, because I can't do anything. I can just be the vessel that God uses. But when He touches you tonight, when He sets you free tonight, when He delivers you tonight of these strongholds, of these bondages, of these voices that has wrapped you up, don't leave this place the same. Don't leave this place doing the same as what you did when you walked in here. Don't leave this place thinking the same way that you did when you walked in here. Don't. Because then you are playing with God. You are playing with Him. Unfortunately, many of us play with God. On a Sunday, we all shandai shandai or we raise our hands, or we come to church thinking because we come into church, we're spiritual, or we okay with God, but yet we live every day of the, our other life or the rest of our life or the rest of our days of the week, doing nothing, being of no profit to God. What are you doing with the gifts and talents that He has given you? Are you burying it? Are you saying, I'm too scared? I can't do anything? You will never do anything until you step out and do something. 
you are going to make mistakes. God never made us perfect. He doesn't expect us to be perfect. He doesn't expect you to walk up to somebody and say perfectly what you, need, what you think you need to say. No, He expects you to be available. He expects you to be usable. He expects you to step out not in your own strength, but in His strength and do something for Him. That is what He expects. So do not walk out of this building the same. Do not play with God. If you don't want to be consecrated and separated, if you don't wanna serve God, if you don't want to follow the instructions and the guidelines that He's given you, then don't. But don't play with God. It is dangerous grounds that you're treading on. Don't play with God. If somebody forces you to come to church, don't force somebody for the people who force them. Don't force them. They will give an account one day, but let your life be a testimony of who God is. Don't force them to come to church, present one thing at church, but from Monday to Saturday, you present something else or you represent God in a certain way. They're not gonna come to church because the God that you serve is fake. You're playing with Him. I cannot serve a God like that, these people are thinking. I will not serve a God like that. No. So don't force somebody to come to church. Invite them. They don't want to come, they won't. But let your life be a living testimony of God. Of who He truly is. Position yourself in Him. Let your life be ordered and directed by Him, but you cannot do it if you live in the natural. So when you leave here today, don't leave the same. Don't go back doing the same things, the same routine, don't have your religious time with God that means nothing because you're doing it out of tradition and religion, thinking that because you're spending that time with God, you're now okay. No, that's the condition of your heart. Let the condition of your heart be to spend time with God because you love Him, because you wanna adore Him, because you wanna worship Him. You wanna glorify and magnify His name. You wanna just tell Him how much you love Him. Yes, there's a time for prayer requests and when we make our requests known to God. But that is not why God has ordained us to be here. People spend their whole life only asking God for stuff. They only spend time with God when they need something, when they want something, when they think they need to kind of like get back in His good books but they don't spend time to get to know Him. When you know God, you will know His voice. When you know your friend and your friend messages you, when they message you and you read that message, you're reading it in their voice, not in your own voice, in their voice. But then when you get a message from somebody that you don't know, you don't know how their voice is, so you read it in your own voice. So if you are not friends with God, you will not be able to recognize His voice. So you will not be able to know what is His voice. So when you're listening to His voice by not knowing Him, you cannot say it's God because you do not recognize God's voice because you don't know His voice. But if you're friends with God, you recognize His voice and He speaks to you in a more personal way because when you read that message from a friend, 
you read it in a more special way because you read it in their tone and not your own. So the same with God. People don't like it when we say, spend time with God, read your word, pray, worship. They don't like it because they're still in the natural. They're still in a place where they're meeting the desires of their flesh. They're not in a place of where they're ready to be used by God. They're not in a place of where they're saying, God, I'm hungry to be used by you. I'm desperate to be used by you. I'm so happy and joyful and excited and ready to to be used by you. When you spend time with God, think about it that way. Be like, God, I say this oftentimes to the Holy Spirit. I say to Him, what are we doing for God today? And I get so excited with Him thinking, what am I doing with Him today? What is the mission that God has for us today? Who do we have to call? Who do we have to speak to? Who do I have to meet in this place or that place? Where do I have to meet them? Christianity is boring when it's a religion and a tradition. Christianity, when you fill in the papers on a form and you tick Christian, it is under what is your religion? So it's religion. But your relationship with God is what makes the difference. So do not be in religion and tradition when spending time with Him, no. You don't come to your friend's house and sit at a table, you open your book, they open their book, and the Bible says this, 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 this. Um, What is your, not, you know, sharing revelation, but The Bible says A, B, C. My Bible says A, B, C. Now the Bible says we need to turn and pray like this. Now let's pray like this. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for our food. Bless it to our bodies and bless the hands who made it. Amen. And then you walk away from that thinking you've just spent time with God. Or you've just... Or let me say it this way. Okay, that is a little bit... I don't know. But let's say you come to your friend's house and you're sitting there and you open a book that says, how to have a conversation with your friend. You open the book, it says, first say, hello. Hello. (laughs) Then say, how was your day? How was your day? And they respond. That is how many people treat their relationship with God. That is how many people go into their prayer room and treat God. Open your Bible, think, let me read what scripture. No, before you even get there, just talk to him. When you get to your friend's house that you haven't seen for a while, and if she's a really good friend, you could have seen them yesterday, or you could have seen them an hour ago. And when you see them again, you'll hug them again because you love them so much. You're so excited to be with them. You don't say, How are you? You know how they are. You don't even need to ask. You can just look at them and be like, wow, she's having a good day. Because you know them. So when God knows you, or when you know God, when you can recognize His voice, you can just step into your prayer room. God can see, but something hits her today. And maybe he wasn't there. Maybe his voice was silent for a moment of the day. Or even maybe his voice is silent for a week because God has times of silence. But you go in there and he sees. Because even though he might be silent, it doesn't mean he's not there. So I might be, let's say, standing there. And Gerard and Michelle could be standing there. Just because I'm not in conversation with them, doesn't mean I'm not there. I might not be part of their conversation, but I can see and I can hear everything that's going on. And when I see, but hey, Michelle really had a rough day today. I can see she's down. I walk up to her and I can say, Michelle. In the same way, God knows when He needs to meet you. He knows when you need a touch from Him. He knows where you are at an edge where He needs to give you a fresh infilling. 
But he doesn't do just do that. There's seasons for that. There's seasons for that. But there's a reason behind that season. There's a reason behind the silence of God. So when he's silenced, don't think to yourself, poor me, poor me. Has God gone away from me? No, there's a reason for his silence. We don't know what it is. Maybe one of the um, messages we'll do on the voice of God is, why is God silent? But there's a reason why God is silent at times. So just because he's not talking, it doesn't mean he's not there. And it doesn't mean you do not have to still go and spend time with him. Because the thing is, is God might be silent, but the Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. And even though he's God's voice, I'm referring to something else now. He will always be your helper. He will always be your guide. That is why he came. He will always be your comforter. If you're sensitive to him in every moment, even if he might be silenced, you'll still feel him. I can be in the building and those who are really connected to me, they might not be talking to me, but they know that I'm here. The moment that prophet walks into a building, even though the staff might be on that side working and he might be sitting on that side busy with what he's doing, I guarantee you when they sit there and they're working and they know that he's there, there's a sense of peace that come on them. I don't know how it works. I don't know why it works that way, but it just is. in the same way with God. So if you are here tonight and you are the person that I called for earlier, where you're so wrapped up with these voices that are limiting you and you just cannot seem to find the breakthrough by yourself, I want you to come forward and we're gonna pray for you. But again, when God touches you, not if He touches you. When God touches you tonight, do not walk out of this building doing the same as what you did. Do not stand here in front with the mindset, if you guys are coming forward, just listening, listen to what I'm saying. Do not come to the front with the same mindset of what you were thinking about yourself beforehand. These voices might be there but you can still choose to believe who God has ordained for you to be, who He has called for you to be. You might not know your purpose, but He's called you to be a son and a daughter to Him. He's called you to be anointed. He's called you to be blessed. He's called you to be prosperous. He's called you to be a vessel that He can use. That is what He's ordained for you. So do not stand here thinking he's not going to touch me tonight. Because if you think in that way, you might as well walk away because he will not touch you. I cannot touch you for him. I can lay my hand on you, but I cannot touch you for him. God is looking at the conditions of our heart. Are you standing here thinking, it's been 40 years, it's been 20 years. He just hasn't done anything for me. I'll just stand here to try again. No, stand here thinking, tonight is the night that my life turns around. If anyone is sensitive, you will know that the presence of God is here. He is here to set you free. He is here to set you up for the greatest life that you have left for the rest of your life. He is here. Please. He is here. 
do not focus on me because then you're expecting a natural body to do something for you. I am the vessel that God is using, but I'm not the one who touches you. The Spirit of God touches you through me. But if you're gonna block Him, He can't touch you. So don't focus, my point in saying all of that, don't focus on what you've already experienced. Don't focus on what has happened to you in your however many years before. Don't focus on the disappointments that you've experienced, not just in the natural realm and the spiritual, where you thought, God, but I was, I really thought you were gonna meet with me today. I really thought that you were gonna talk to me today and you didn't. But what happens many times, for those of you who didn't hear this morning, what happens, we expect God to do something and He doesn't because we're expecting Him to just talk to us audibly or to talk to us in a light figure or in a burning bush. No, this is where He talks to us from. So every disappointment that you've had in the natural and in your spiritual, I don't want you to focus on it here on the altar. I want you to close your eyes and raise your hands and surrender. I don't know what is the most love song that you know, but I wanna just think about it. If it takes a few seconds while I'm talking, think about it. But really a love song that we can sing and when you're singing these words, don't just take it as a song, but take it and mean it from your heart. You are still living, you are still breathing because God has a mandate for you to still fulfill. And it is impossible for you to be here and not be able to be used by God. You will not be standing here and be unworthy to be used by God. Never, never, ever, ever. You just have to believe it. Believe that God has ordained that for you and leave everything else here on the altar. Leave it. Drop it off. If you need to physically shake it off, shake it off. If you need to cry out with a deep yearning inside for God, cry out. Don't worry about the person standing next to you. They are not going to cause you to have this encounter with God. Don't allow them to stop you from having this encounter with God. Prophet said it last week, when the anointing is evidence in a place, when He shows up, when God shows up in a place, it's proof of the message that He's delivered, that He's given, of the word that was spoken. So if this is what God has for you tonight, He is here. He is here. Receive Him. So in this moment now, just close your eyes, don't look. If you struggle to keep your eyes closed, remember what I told you in the beginning. Keep them closed, raise your hands and sing.
you repeat after me say heavenly father right now I ask I humbly ask I ask with everything that's inside of me that you would forgive me of every area in my life that I've allowed above you every voice that I've entertained, every spirit that I have given legal rights over my life. Father, I'm desperate for a touch from you. I'm hungry for a touch from you. Father, I'm sorry for where I have disobeyed you, for where I chose to ignore you, and where I unknowingly ignored your voice. Forgive me, forgive me, set me free. Let tonight be a turnaround in my life. Let tonight be the night that I encounter you, that I experience you, that will change the rest of my life. Holy Spirit, awaken in me, burn bright in me. Father, I pray, Father, I hunger. I'm desperate for a hunger and a passion and a desire for more of you. Do not pass me by tonight. Say, Father, do not pass me by tonight. Let me not walk out of this place without encountering you. I'm hungry, Father. I'm desperate. Say, I need you, but mean it. Mean it from the deepest part of your body. Don't just repeat me. If you need God tonight, tell Him how much you need Him. Right now, as we sing this song again, tell Him how hungry you are for Him. Tell Him how desperate you are tonight for him but don't just tell him show him in your actions if you are at home do the same thing get down on your knees raise your hands and close your eyes surrender in this moment with your actions with your heart he's here he is here the little bit of strength 
what you have. Open up your heart. And the moment that you surrender is the moment that He can rush in. And it's the moment that He can encounter you. Cry it out tonight. And I...
you to just sing 
in your heavenly language because that is a language the enemy cannot decode it is a language that he cannot understand so right now I want you to just sing don't feel you need to whisper you're not singing to me sing with a passion to the King of Kings the words that you are singing in your heavenly language now is the perfect will of God for your life for this moment your spirit knows how to connect the perfect will of God
presence of God to those who are sensitive is tangible in this place. And the thing is, is that it's resting upon you. As you walk out of this place tonight, do not walk out the same. If you walk out and you wanna do something in the natural, think to yourself, I do not want to play with God. I do not wanna play with the responsibility that He's given me. The fact that you know now God is going to hold you accountable. When things are revealed to you and shared with you, you held accountable. Father, I pray tonight that as your presence fell in this place, as your anointing fell tonight, as you destroyed the yokes and the bondages and the limitations and the clutters and the strongholds of the minds and the lives of the people tonight. Father, I pray that tonight would be a permanent encounter with you. Father, I pray that they would become sensitive to your voice that they would become obedient to your voice so that they do not go back into the place of where they've come from. Father, give them a strength, give them a courage, give them a boldness and a tenacity. Give them wisdom and revelation. Give them understanding and knowledge. Give them faith tonight that will keep them on this journey that you started tonight with this responsibility that you've given them tonight. Give them the strength, Father. Father, I pray that each one here today, that they will have this awareness and the burden that you placed on me tonight, let it be evident and let it rest upon them. But Father, I know they cannot do it without you. So help them. My prayer tonight, Father, is in the same way that you always help me. Holy Spirit, in the same way that you always come through for me, that you would do the same for them. Father, teach them your ways. Teach them your will. Reveal your will to them for their lives so that they can run with it. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. My best friend, I love you. Thank you once again, Father. I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for what you did today because if it wasn't for you, None of us would be here. None of us, this would be able. Encounter wouldn't be able if it wasn't for you. So I thank you, Father, for not just choosing Leon and I, but thank you for choosing each and every single individual that is in this building and all the other buildings and that is connected to this house, to this vessel that you've chosen. We love you. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. So before we go, give God your greatest shout of praise in thanksgiving, in adoration. Just admire the work that He done tonight. Take the work. Oh, come on, somebody. You can shout louder than that. your brother or your sister maybe they with you but he chose you 
He chose you to make a difference in this world. So for that, give Him your greatest show of praise. I feel like finally I can put a smile on my face. <laughs> it was a little bit difficult. Even for myself, I want to go listen what God said tonight. Because if you know what it was like for me before the service, you would know that the word that was delivered tonight came straight, straight from the throne room of God. One of, the, one of the words that God gave to me through Prophet Leon, and I don't think I've ever shared this publicly, but one of the words that he gave me, and I'll never forget this, he said to me, my prayers will go straight through to the throne room of God. Other people's prayers might have limitations or blockages, and I never understood it until more recently. In the same way that my prayers go straight through, it doesn't make me special. It just makes me chosen by God for that. But also, if you know the life that I live, that I've lived, you will understand. But it's not nothing to do with me. Nothing. I don't take glory for that. My fact in saying that is that tonight, the very fact... Like I said, if you don't know what I was like before the service, you will not understand. But take my word for it. Tonight is a word straight from God, straight from Him. Even I, myself, I'm gonna go listen to it again. If you didn't take notes in the building, go home, listen to it as soon as possible, take the notes and apply that stuff. You need to put into action what you've learned. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Have a great week, everybody. Don't come back the same next week. Don't come back alone next week. Because if you are, I know you didn't reach somebody. Seriously, I know that you didn't reach somebody that God has assigned to you. Why does God only have to assign five people? The more available you become for God, the more He'll use you. The more usable you are for Him, the more He'll use you. So be used by Him this week. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everybody.